Hello, I'm Donna Clayton, and welcome to a very special edition of Faith with Slaver. It's that time of year again where we see children and adults dress up in costumes to celebrate Halloween. No matter how you feel about Halloween, the truth of the matter is that spiritual darkness is real. The Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. It's important that we stay informed to help those around us make wise decisions. So get ready because today we're going to meet a man who came out of the occult. And we're going to find out about the dangers he faced. I'm talking about evangelist John Ramirez who now preaches the word of God and helps people become set free from the powers of darkness. We're also going to discuss the power of our words. Thank you so much for tuning into Faith with Flavor. I am so honored to introduce to you the man of the hour, none other than evangelist John Ramirez. Evangelist, thank you so much for being here, John. Thank you for having me here. It's amazing to be on your show. I am so, (laughs) only God, amen. You told me some stuff before the camera started rolling, so I know this is divine. (laughs) It is divine, and more than that, you have such a powerful testimony, which is my heart for Faith with Flavor, is to showcase those testimonies. There is power in your words. You know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, like the Word of God says, and you are a perfect living testimony of that. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about your upbringing. What was it like growing up in your home? I I think growing up in my home because it was so demonic. I mean, some people grow up in homes that are dysfunctional. I grew up in demonic, dysfunctional home. My father, so everything in my house was silent pain. You, you know, you had to pretend you were happy. You had to pretend that things were good. And, and, and my home was run by demons and, and, and witches and warlock. My father was a demonic warlock. It was run by demonic spirits. I would see spirits in my house like I would see you in person. I mean, roam around the house. You feel the, 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 the devil's uh, uh, presence in the house. Uh, it, it, it was uh, growing up and then going to witchcraft church at the age of eight, all the way to the eight. Uh, eight from eight, eight years old, I was going to witchcraft church, right? And this is the, 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 demonic, the crazy thing about it. From seven in the evening to five in the morning, the monitor, I was already being groomed and I was being prepared and I was being uh, uh, in a, putting in a place that the devil wanted to use me for his kingdom. Mm. Now, growing up in a home like that, I mean, I would think that you would be afraid and that you would, you know, not want to indulge in that. But, you know, there was a point where you ended up, you know, worshiping Satan. Mm -hmm. How did you get to that place? You know, know, one of the the trickiest, one of the most delusional tricks that the devil has for uh, humankind, that he knows one thing, how to penetrate the camp of every human being. He makes everything cultural. So, 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 so in my world, Santeria, the Peritimo, Palomayume, uh, you know, going to Botanicas, going to Misa, going to Centros, going to these places, you know, it was a cultural thing because, you know, all Hispanic people, they wanted to worship saints. All Hispanic people wanted to light up candles. You know, all Hispanic people wanted some good luck and they wanted good luck. They wanted to be blessed, you know, so this is the way we should do it. But that was a trap of the devil because for 25 years, I lived in the dark, I lived in demonic, demonic, the highest level of witchcraft, demonic, the kingdom of darkness, even to the point that I would sit with Satan, like I said with you, to get my orders, my marching orders, to chase the church, to chase the people, and bring people to the dark side so they won't reach the cross of Jesus Christ. Did you know that you were being deceived in the- Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I know, for, you know, I think what, 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 what would really justify my situation, and I, it was a justification, I'm just saying at the time. Yeah. It would, would justify my situation at the time. It wasn't even being deceived. It's a point, I like the power. I like the respect because I, I came from a, I was a, I came from a place that was fragmented. This I was I came from a, a pain. So now I got respect. I have a witchcraft family. I have loyalty. I have I had love. Superficial love, by the way, because the devil can't love you. You made an image of God. So I had all that going for 25 years. But in the end, Jesus showed up. You know, I was listening to an interview that you did with CBN, and I was so amazed at the part where you said that you used to go to different regions. Tell us about what you would do when you would go to those different regions. My assignment was, uh, uh, my, my assignment was, you know, I would, I, would, I would recruit people during the day. I would do witchcraft during the day on people. I would try to hit you from all four sizes so you had nowhere to breathe. So, so I, in, in night, I would astral project. 
and go to neighborhoods because you see, I know if I can curse the neighborhood, if I can put different demons in that neighborhood, I can paralyze the neighborhood from moving forward in the spirit round. Because whatever you paralyze in the spirit round and control in the spirit round, you, it happens in the natural. But there were some neighborhoods. There were some neighborhoods that these, uh, you know, I used to call them hallelujah people. You know, <laughs> That's a, they, they were very nuisance at the time. <laughs> but they had something. Say that again. Say that again for our audience watching right now. It has something. The power of prayer. So, so I, will, I will actually project. I will come out of my body, end up in the neighborhoods. And then I, when I get to the neighborhood, I was, I was be, uh, in New York City. If you've ever been to New York, they got these light poles or whatever. I don't know if they have them here. Yeah. And, and I, will, I will be as high as the light pole, actually projecting. And then I was, I was trying to come down to the neighborhood to saturate the, 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 the region with demonic powers. Mm -hmm. They will come out around the corner. They will be holding hands. Wow. Holding hands is called unity wow. in the spirit. And they will pray. Man, they will chase me out the neighborhood to that prayer, the power Ooh, prayer. Oh, hallelujah. And I will have to take off and find some weak neighborhood to mess with. The power of power our prayers. Of prayers. I, I, you know, you know what's amazing, my sister, that mm -hmm. I can I can bear witness to the power of prayer from the dark side, and I can bear witness from the power of prayer now that I'm in Jesus. Amen. So I've seen it from both sides. And you know, another thing that that makes me realize is that there's power in our words because you, when you were going and you were transmitting yourself into those places, you were speaking mm -hmm. words over them, right? Yeah, I mean, I would curse them. I would try to curse them. But you see, Proverbs 18, 21 says, the power of life and death lays in your tongue. I will curse, but you can't curse what God has blessed. So they will turn around, they will pray back, and they will wow. avoid my, my, they will avoid my, my cursing, my assignment, and I will come back into my body, and I was heated at three in the morning. For the way, I was heated. I said, <laughs> don't hold your people. Then they got in my way. Man, I wow. can't believe it. I didn't get what I wanted to get done. And now let's talk about God bringing you full circle because now you speak words of life. Amen. How do you, you do that? Uh, you, know, you know the amazing thing about my conversion that Jesus had to prove nothing, but he loved me. So he, he, I, I was laying in my bed for the first time in my life. I was depressed. I was, I was hanging. I was, I was in a, I, I was, I was a Germanic general in the kingdom of darkness, right? I was hanging out with people with Celia Cruz, Mark Anthony people, India. I don't know if I can tell you these names, but I was hanging out with these people. They are into Santeria, Peritimo, Tito Puente, all those people, Celia Cruz. I was hanging out with all those people with whole, whole Santeria. I was hanging out with all that. I was going to VIP clubs. I was, I was, I didn't have to make, I, I was in the best list. I had the best girlfriend. I had the best money, but God took me to hell. I had power. I, I, I can transform myself as an animal, end up in your house, I should project in your house, end up like an animal, the power of darkness. I would do all that, but God took me to hell. And when I, it was in a train, they were full of people that you couldn't see the faces, but then when you could feel the terror and you could feel the, the, you could feel the fear in the train. And when the train, and the, and the people knew that they weren't coming back, but we were going. And when the train hit hell, it was the speed of this train. You can't even describe it. When they hit hell, the gates opened and ended up in hell. The first thing I said to myself, I don't belong here. I believe every person that ended up in hell does the first words I said, they don't, live, they don't belong here. I walked through the portals of hell, trying to find a door in the window. You know, you know, you know, you ever, you ever been, someone ever frightened you, you like, you know, you jump like that. You see, in hell, fear comes on you like, like, like a coat. And this thing wraps around you like a coat, fear. And you can't take it off. And you and we're walking to the portals. And then I was touching the ground. And the ground breathes in hell. The ground is alive in hell. It breathes. It, it's, it's like a like you ever seen you, you when someone lays on, on when someone lays on the bed, the tummy go up and down. That's how the ground does. And then the ground feels like marshmallow. There's no grip on the ground. And I'm walking to the portals of hell. The devil comes out. And the devil says, I loved you. I owned you. I gave you power. You're trying to expose my religion. You're trying to expose my, the way I operate on the earth front. And I said, oh yeah. I said, I'm not gonna leave you. I'm, I'm just confused. Give me, a, give me an opportunity, give me a chance. When he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared between him and I. Hallelujah. Dropped him like a bad habit. Oh. <laughs> and when he dropped him, instead of me holding up to the cross, I took off again into another part of hell. Hell has compartments, it has tunnels. I took off to another part of hell. And when the devil came up again, he said, now I have to destroy you. 
because I know if you live, you will tell the people about me and about my tricks, about my patterns and cycles. And I said, oh yeah? And I had a pair of blue shorts and I had a t-shirt. And I said, I, I got something that's gonna destroy you. And we were, we were talking in demonic tongues, by the way. Wow, there's a such yeah, thing. Oh yeah, the devil copied everything that Jesus got. Ain't nothing new for the devil, he's a copycat. <laughs> <laughs> he got nothing new. He's a copycat, he's a bootleg. <laughs> he, do, he create That's duplicates. Right. <laughs> he create duplicates. He got nothing new. He can't create anything. So I said, okay, you know what I'm gonna do to you? I'm gonna destroy you. I said, because I forgot I had no chance. It's him and I. I mean, they, I had a pair of shorts, t-shirt. So I said, I, I'll destroy you with these. You see my marks right here? Yeah. Those are my marks when I sold my soul to the devil. I said, I destroy you with these. And he said, fool, I give you that. That means I own you. I have legal rights over you. He went to grab me. I mean, fury came over him. He went to grab me. The cross of Jesus Christ. If you make your bed in hell, he is there. Amen. Set me free. <laughs> Amen. When I came back into my body, I thought it was an ICU. I thought it had paddle with electricity, and boom, and they just came back into my body. How did you feel after you came back? Like, did you feel normal? Did you feel? I knew that was the only window that God was giving me to repent because I was so wicked that God only gave me one chance. Wow. Because I was so wicked. I, I didn't have a conscience. I didn't have a memory of doing witchcraft to people, giving people miscarriages, giving, putting witchcraft to people to destroy people, giving people sickness so they can die and operate tables. God said, I give you one chance. Turn now or forever. You'll be, and you'll, be, you'll be condemned. I turned. I bent my knee. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I had $100,000 witchcraft stuff in my house. Santeria stuff, Paloma Yume stuff, Epiritimo stuff. I had human bones in my house that I was sending down to do witchcraft to people. I threw all that away for one thing, the cross of Jesus Christ. How do you break generational curses? It, 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 you know, breaking generational curses is a simple thing. You gotta go back. You know, you know, remember when Jesus said, when Lazarus died, he said, bring me to the place that you bury him. Bring me to the place where you got your generational curse. Is it on your father's bloodline? Is it on your mother's bloodline? Where is the bloodline? What is the gener Identify the curse. Identify the bloodline. Where is it coming from? Is, is it sickness? Is it, is it alcoholism? How many people, you know, my father was a drunk. My father was a drunk, by the way. And my grandfather was a drunk. And then when I was in witchcraft, I was drinking like $3,500 a month in liquor. I was in the same direction, but the curse was broken. My daughter Amanda, right? I got a high school diploma, so don't run out this, don't run, <laughs> don't run, don't run away. I have a high school diploma, but I broke the curse. My daughter got a PhD, my daughter got a bachelor's degree in psychology. The curse is broken. You have to identify what's trying to kill you, because if you can identify what's killing you, you can destroy it before it kills you. Renounce. Use your words. The power in your words. You said it. Proverbs 18, 20, with the anointing, the power God giving you. The devil, enough is enough. I draw the line here. No more cancer in my family. No more alcoholism in my family. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. I uproot it. I level. I put you on notice. It's renounced. I break ties with it. Lord, forgive me for it. I break ties for it. Devil, I just give it an eviction notice. Amen. You gotta go. Love don't live here anymore. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. If someone watching would like to get in contact with you, where can they go? Simple, John Ramirez Ministry .org. John, thank you so much thank for you, your my time. Sister, it's been for such an honor. Thank Amen. You, thank you. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching Faith with Flavor and for being a part of what God is doing right here on the show. If this show has blessed you in any way, I would love to hear your comments. Please find me at www.lifewithdonna.com and subscribe to my email list so that we can stay connected. The Word of God says, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is your promise for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.